a message for the Igbos, for the Easterners. This is what I saw coming. Many Easterners around the world will be convinced to return resources to develop their states between now and the 10 years. Between now, count from this year to the 10th year. Whenever you see people from the East, they are wise men. That's the truth. I have good news for you. This revival you see will not be aborted. Can go back to this video after 10 years. The Eastern states joined together will be like another Dubai. I'm not talking of Nigeria. I'm talking of the Eastern states will be like another Dubai. 10 years back, go back to this video. If you don't see what I am saying that attracts the world like Dubai attracts people in the eastern say eastern part of Nigeria know that all the messages have been delivered I didn't hear it well in 10 years if Jesus tarries YouTube does not crash you go back to this video you will see it I'm telling you what I saw that many of us will want to relocate to the eastern states from around the world they will want to have their headquarters in the eastern states do you know why I'm saying this? Do you know that America, United States of America, is not just one country. Different, different countries makes United States. Now, I am seeing something like that in the Eastern States. Look at this, the way God put it. I will read it verbatim, the way he detected it to my ear. In case when it happens. Son, tell the Easterners that there is something coming and it is in connotation of something that sounds like a coalition of eastern economic development hear it a coalition of eastern economic what development this is what it means eastern states coming together now the force behind this economic development is as much powerful like the force behind the biafran push behind the biafran ideology are you hearing me now yes, but this one now is not yearning for division whether division comes or not, Biafra comes or not, is not what I'm talking about now. I'm talking about their economy and the development of that geopolitical zone. God gave me something. I saw it written on the wall. Coalition of Eastern Economic Development. Amen. We are states. Joins together. But in the midst of this one state, out of the states that makes up the Eastern state, we lag behind that when they enter that state, they will say, is this one also part of Eastern states? I am giving you complete message. So when that time starts, you see some states developing and one lagging behind. No, that is that one I'm talking about. But as I am telling you, if Jesus tarries, 10 years from now, you will see those who once ran after Abuja, ran after Lagos, ran after Potakot, they will wish that they would have had a land in one of the Eastern states before now. Because I see another Dubai in Eastern states. It's not a favoritism prophecy. I'm telling you what will happen. I'm not telling you because I'm your in-laws. I'm your in-law. I'm not telling you because I grew up there. I am telling you what I saw. Ten, what, how many years did I say? Ten years. How many years did I say? Ten years. Whenever you see people from the East, they are wise men. That's the truth. Wise men from the East. Check the story of Abraham from the East. Wise men are always from the East. This is not about tribal this thing. Wise men are always from the east. Every country I go, I see Igbos there. Wise men from the east. Give them the economy. They will show you wise men from the east. Ask Ungozi. I mean, what's her name? Eh? That's it. A woman with an impeccable character and wisdom. On economy wise men from the east like what the abia governor is already doing wise men from the east if we must solve nigeria equation the Igbo must not be removed they are part of nigeria include them in the planning and in the brain plan of nigeria wise men from the east. You know what happened? The day they killed Tafar Balewa, they removed his turban, they poured wine on his head, forced him to drink, and shot him. 
And while he was being killed, he said, none of your tribe will ever rule Nigeria. It's not a new thing I'm saying. And I said, I want to break the curse today because these egos were not part of those people. You cannot overgeneralize. And I went into the Bible. I showed them as Genesis 49. Read it! You are my firstborn. You will not excel. You went to my couch. You defiled my couch. You are stable as water. But God raised Moses. So let Reuben live and not die. And let his men not be few. As in the authority of God's word, I reverse the course of Tafal Balewa over the Igbo generation. You will have access to the throne like any other person. Do you understand this? If you don't rise above tribal and religious, gosh, God help me. If you don't rise above it, you can't fix a nation. You can't repair the breach. You can't restore the past to dwell in. Because the divine destiny of the Southeast and the Igbo man is to liberate Nigeria. You're welcome once again to this YouTube channel. In this video, we share an emphasis that you probably didn't see in the previous video. In this video, Pastor Chintok Ishaku talks about that it is the divine destiny of the Igbo man, take note, the Igbo man, to liberate Nigeria. In the other video you probably have seen, he said that a South Eastern will rule Nigeria. What's the remaining part of that prophecy? Let me say something to you that if you like, you can take as prophecy. If the Southeast cuts off from Nigeria today, the reason why it will not survive is not lack of resources. It's because the internal covetousness and selfishness will cause that the wars will continue until the entire region is decimated. Take note. Say, say, you know prophets I used to say, yeah, I hear the Lord, thus said the Lord. Look at me, my eyes are clear. You can see, I don't look drunk. But you can take that as a word of prophecy. Take it to the bank and cash. Because the divine destiny of the Southeast and the Igbo man is to liberate Nigeria. It's part of the reasons why Satan put him under the bondage of this nation and caused the chains of this nation to tighten hard around him. While Satan thought he did it for evil, God did it for good so that a morning will rise out of here that the Holy Ghost will step in and conform. Because, hear me, the size of your morning and what you are mourning about reveals your right to dominion. So if I've not said anything in the last 15, 20 minutes, I've said, can you put a lot of discipline around the things that have to do with your appetite and your small selfish life so that you can enlarge the sphere of what you are uncomfortable around so that when the Holy Ghost shows up to comfort, he has something substantial to comfort you concerning. This is quite an interesting season to be alive as we see a lot of the prophecies already unfolding before our eyes. Thank you for watching this video and please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you are aware of everything that is happening within the body of Christ as we share you these contents, news and updates. Thank you and God bless you. You know, Nigeria still doesn't produce um, industrial quality steel. Mm. Even though there was supposedly the world's largest steel mill was Cookie constructed steel. in Nigeria. Now, what most people don't know is that the consultants who who designed that steel mill yeah. recommended that that steel mill should be sited just outside one mm. but as a direct result of the, the Biafran the war the, no as a direct result of the Biafran war it was mm. a stated policy of Murtala Mohammed that we should not reward those Igbos wow. so it now moved it to a forest in Kogi state instead in fact the Metallurgy Institute of Nigeria which was already constructed prior to the steel mill till today it's in Onicha mm. that's why because that was constructed first. The steel mill was supposed to be next to the Metallurgy yeah. Institute. Yeah. That's why Metallurgy Institute is not a steel mill is in Kogi. You know? 
But Nigeria ended up dribbling itself because we went and put it in Kogi where it's unviable. It has never produced anything in 40 plus years. Listen, he's not the only, he's not the house alone. The bigger problem we have in this world, the Yoruba have, is Igbo problem. Is Igbo problem. The, 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 the marital and then the, 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 the killing. And most the Yoruba race, Yoruba land is by the Igbos. Then when you look at the fake drug, it's by the Igbos. When you look at all the adulterated drugs, so it's by the Igbos. And when you look at all the all the fake things they brought from China, it's all the Igbos. And when you look at all the shops in the Yarampaja and everywhere, it's by the Igbos. And when you look at the Okotoko and all the saints, even the name they are bearing in their village is different from the name they are bearing in, in Akure. And Igbo who did not go to school, who did not know his left from right, is selling drugs in Abulegba. He's having a chemist in Abulegba. He's having a chemist in Surude. He's having a chemist in what in Ayobo. He's having a blood bank where they extract blood and sell into the hospital in Mushi and in Yarampaja. It's Igbo people. All to bring down the Yoruba people. So the problem we have now is, is too enormous. Now even to be talking about uh, uh, Wasi was uh, was uh, was a chief dancer of Yoruba land. And when you look at it, now Ibo is looking for a way to be a member of the uh, House of Assembly in Lagos. Ibo is looking for a way to be a member of the House of Assembly in Ondo State. Ibo is looking for a way to be a House of uh, member of uh, Assembly in Oyo. What is the meaning of all this? And then they want to have the Emir of uh, Emir of uh, Kano Sela in Ore. They want to have the Emir, the Seriki of uh, uh, Plantain Sela in Abokuta. They want to have the Seriki of Onion Sela in Awal in Idimota. When are we going to run out of this rubbish? And when they are bringing all this cow in, they brought in ammunition. What is the problem they are facing? So it's just like that. So they should not cause any, any trouble for now. Between now and 2023, they need to be arranging themselves. We are about going. Because when you look at the book of Exodus 1, Exodus 1 verse 8, 9 and 10, he said, anytime the Egyptians are given bad, the Israelites are given bad, he said, kill all their sons. Kill all their sons so that they will not join the enemy tomorrow to attack us. That's what he said. Then when you go down... There are a number of things I could have said to you. But let me say one. When we went to dedicate the church in Abakliki, when was that, Pastor George? 8th of May this year, right? 8th of May this year. I was reading a scripture in Acts chapter 4. Was that Acts 4? Hear me very clearly so that you understand this. I was reading Acts chapter 4 and I stopped and I said and I didn't start saying it this year. For at least the last 8-9 years of my ministry life, I've been shouting Nigeria has not been fair to the Igbo man. Nigeria has not been fair to the Southeasterner and that God will answer on behalf of the Southeast. I have said it for the last 9 years. Listen, then we were reading. You remember when James, they, they caught James, no, Peter and John. And they said to them, they should never preach in the name of Jesus. And when they were threatening them, they entered into council. And Gamaliel, who was a leader of the Lord. Now listen to me very carefully, because this is very prophetic. What day was that? 7th of May, right? 8th of May. 8th of May. Take note of the date. <laughs> Gamaliel, who was head of council, or who was very respected in council because of his knowledge, he was the one who schooled Paul in the Jewish religion, said to them, Guys, let us be careful. He said, Because one rose like this, thinking himself to be something, he said he was caught and he was killed, and his followers scattered. And nothing became of that. He said another one rose up and called his name. He said he was caught. And his followers scattered. And nothing came out of that movement. He said, but this man. We have caught him. We have killed him. But his followers are not dispersing. They are increasing in strength. He said, let us be careful. Lest we find ourselves fighting against and I said, clearly, I didn't say it in French, I didn't say it in British, I didn't say it in German. I said, clearly in that meeting in Abakiki, I said to them, the present movement in the Southeast 
is not God's movement for liberation. So the leader will be caught and the power of it will decimate. And yet, out of the ashes of that, God will raise another man out of the southeast whose agitation is after the order of God. The nation will gather around him, not only the southeast. And in that day, a southeasterner will, will rule Nigeria. Take note of it. When I say 8th of May, I'm sure you have heard everything Pastor Makunaku have to say concerning our country, Nigeria. I'm sure that you listen to every damn thing he, he has said about our country. You see, I keep saying this thing that we need to pray for, for Nigeria. We need to pray for Nigeria because I've looked at it, I've analyzed it, I've just, I've thought about it. The country really needs prayer. The country needs prayer because I don't know why things are not really working in the country. I don't understand why our leaders are so strong-hearted. I don't understand why the people that are supposed to be serving us are acting as if we are supposed to be serving them. I don't understand why they cannot decide to fix this country once and for all. If you ask me, I don't understand. I don't understand it. Go look at the way the country is going. And it's like they are not shaking. They are not feeling anything. No matter what the men of God have said, nothing. No matter how much the, the, the people have cried, they are not doing anything about it. Why? Please, if you know why, let me know in the comment section. Because me, I've tried to understand it, but I cannot just wrap my head around it. Why these people, they are like this? Every time we are hearing that this will happen, this will happen. And if you follow Pastor McMiracle track record, you see that most of his prophecies, they come, they come to pass. So look at this, look at series of events, the series of events that have played out just in this year, 2024 alone. Just imagine. That's how I said it in, in my previous video that if you, do, if you are not strong, eh, if you don't have strong heart, if you, if, if, if you are not built very well, eh, you will not be able to survive in this country, Nigeria. You will not be able to. And that is why when we leave this country to another place, we excel. Because there is nothing that will happen in that country that we have not seen before. Nothing. nothing there is nothing in this our eyes have not seen. So when we go out there, we excel. Because of the hardship. But that does not mean that they should be... They, 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 they want to suffocate us in this country. The leaders. These politicians. Greedy people. So please, I want to urge us. You have listened to everything Pastor Makunaka have said to be happening. The one that needs to be prayed about, let us pray about it. Eh? I am begging us. I know that we say Nigeria don't need prayer. If you follow the way Nigeria is doing it, eh, you will not want to pray for this country. The country, in fact, the country needs sanitization. I've said it that we need to fumigate and sanitize the country. That is what we need now. Because I don't understand why the country is... Look, eh? Oh, I just... The one reason I know that God sent this on this country eh, is that some, if some country face half of what we are facing, eh, they will not be able to stand. But we have been going through all the things that these politicians have been throwing at us, all the mess up they have been, been creating in this country, and we are still here, alive and strong. Though some people have died, but I'm telling you that if some countries go through half of what we are going through, majority of them will be wiped out. But we just thank God that we are here. And that is why always I encourage us that we pray for our country. It's not because we are enjoying the situation of the country. It's not because things are going on well. It's not because we love everything that we are seeing. It's not because we plan for this type of life. But we need to be praying for the country for God to at least help us fix this country. Because at this point in time, I feel that it is only God that can help us fix the country. I don't understand. Every time one problem to another. Every time one problem to another. Every time. And the thing is, if the youth, if the people complain, let me not even say the youth. If the people complain, <laughs> nothing is happening. If people complain, nothing is happening. Before I even just continue, just listen to what this, uh, 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 what this, uh, our fellow Nigerians are saying. Just listen, you, you, just listen to how bitter most of them are. They, nobody is happy in the country again. I just want you to listen to what these people have to say about our country. To tell you how bad it is. Listen to, just listen, listen. Not to, not to slaughter them. 
And we know play make them they alive. Now to wipe out those uh, all these illegal Ogoni people, they work for all this Nigeria, Nigeria. They say hunger too much. Mm. Hunger, come on, Gary. When first go carry Gary, put for water drink. Gary cost, yeah, low low cost. They shot everything. Nothing there, normal. We all know that. I don't know of other states, but in my states, there are houses that, for a good four or five days, they cook nothing and they sleep on nothing and they feed on nothing. People now go out to beg. Even those that are not supposed to beg now go out to beg. I'm sure you have heard it for yourself. Everybody is, everybody is frustrated and tired. Everybody is frustrated and tired. Yet, the, go the government will see all this thing, you know, but they will do nothing about it. The government, are see they will not tell me that they are not seeing it. They are seeing every damn thing, but they have decided that they will not do anything about it. They have decided that instead of they will feed this country, Nigeria, that they will that let all of us die. You can see how frustrated the people are Sunday. You can see. Yet, you, you ask them, our one of our lawmakers, Abi, our deputy, what, 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 in the House of Rep, they uh, said that, uh, uh, what, what was he even saying? That they, they, they will reduce their salary uh, uh, by, by half for six months. Then after six months, what next? And just listen, listen to what this man is saying. Just listen to him. I'm moving that we amend that prayer to include that members sacrifice. Uh, maybe 50% of our salary for a period of three months or six months to help Nigerians and to show that we are in support. Uh, I so move, Mr. Speaker. I hope you have heard what he said. Now the question is, after six months, what next? These are the people that are supposed to be serving us. They are acting as if they are doing us a favor. Let us pray about everything Pastor Makurako have said. Let us pray. Because at the end of the day, if we don't pray about it, the country will continue to move backward. The country will continue to remain stagnated. They will continue to suffer in the country. We will continue to go through this hardship. We will continue to beg like we are beggars in our own father's land. Enough is enough. If you are not tired, me, I'm tired. These politicians really have to stand up and start doing things for us. Look at how frustrated our people are. Look at it. I watched another uh, interview of uh, uh, where they were asked, talking to uh, uh, our fellow Nigerians about the things going on in the country. Just listening to what they are saying, one cup of garlic, 300 naira. Some people are saying it's 300, some people are saying it's 250, some people are saying it's 2. Just listen. Just pay attention. I know why I'm showing you all these things, so that you understand the reason why we need to pray. Just listen. Today, we are on the streets of Lagos to ask Nigerians what are their experiences with the high cost of living as well as their coping mechanism. I am Oluwashem Mohammed. It has not been easy uh, since uh, the drastic change that took place in Nigeria. Talking about the, the increase in fuel, you know, before you can just uh, run, go to a filling station, get fuel and smile away. But nowadays it seems they the money is increasing every day. Every day you go, the pump price has jumped up. And uh, anytime you get it, you get angry with yourself, you get angry with the country. But if you look at the problem in the country, you will wake up, you will sleep with sadness and wake up with sadness. We are coping hard, too hard, too over ourselves in coping. No? But we don't even know what to call about that coping. The coping is not easy. But no matter how it is, we're going to thank God. The way we eat before, we cannot eat again now. We used to eat three times. Now, Seb, I need to eat two times. That very hard to eat two times. So I can say I'm surviving by the grace of God. It's God's grace that's keeping me. I'm sure you have heard it. So after hearing all these things, now you say you will not pray about the country, eh, brother? Sister, you say you will not pray about this country until we die because you want to weaken the police. See, eh, have, let us do well to pray for this, for our country. Let us do well to pray for our country. And I believe that everything is going to get well again. Not despite all the hardship that we are seeing right now, everything is going to get well again. Earlier this year, even Papa Deboye mentioned it, that a, wave, a wind will blow and then things will become hard and then things will become better. If you have learned it, just listen to where Papa Deboye said it. 
listen you can write this in capital letters the wind is blowing so you should include in your prayer that the wind will blow you you good mm -hmm. because the wind is blowing it's already blowing you, you can't stop the wind as far as nigeria is concerned my beloved children since we get worse before it gets better mark my word that's what daddy says we're already complaining that things are hot huh? the good news is the wind is already blowing as it's going to get a bit hotter before it begins to cool down I'm sure you have heard it. I know why I'm letting you watch all these things so that you will understand that no matter what we are facing through right now, if we can come together and pray about all these things, everything is going to be better. Nigeria will be better again. Nigeria will be greater. Nigeria will be bigger. Papa Deboy have said it, that things will be hard, then things will not become better. I know you may not like him. You may not say you will say oh, he is not saying anything about it. But at least he, he he has said it. I'm not telling you to like him. I'm just showing you this so that you will have hope and believe. You have heard everything Pastor McMiracle have said. The next thing we need to do is to pray about it. Join me to pray about this country. Let us pray. Nigeria is the only country we have. I don't know about you, but me, I don't have another country. I don't have dual citizenship anywhere. This is my country. And I will do the little I can to make sure that this country pro make progress, that this country moves forward. So I am begging you, let us pray for our country, Nigeria. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria, please. Yes, you are angry. Your anger is understandable. You have every right to be angry. But let us not get to the angry, let us not get angry to the point that we forget to pray or we neglect to pray about our country. This is our country. I am begging us. Look at all the things Pastor Mark Miracle have said. Are you going, are we just going to sit down and fold our hands and say, let these things happen? The good ones he said will, he will, it will happen, let us pray that it happens. But you see those bad and ugly ones, let us pray that God forces it out from our, our country. Please, I am begging us, even though you want Nigeria to divide, at least for now, let us try to pray and do whatever we can to make sure that this country at least will remain as one and fix the country. Then later, we cannot, talk, we cannot talk about division. I am begging us. I am begging us. I am not enjoying what is going on in the country. I myself am not enjoying what is going on in the country. I am not enjoying it. You hold 10,000 naira, you can't you can buy anything. You hold 50,000, you can buy. Sometimes I will sit in the room and want to cry because it's like you are making money, the money is going. You, the money is wasting. It's like you don't know what... You, I don't, please, let us do well to pray for our country. We need to fix this country as fast as possible. Even though you not do it for yourself, let us do it for our born children. Let us do it for, 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 for posterity. Let us do it for the next generation. Let us pray. Let us pray. And I will plead with all pastors, all our spiritual leaders, because I know, I keep saying this thing, that if Papa E.A. Adeboye, Papa Oye Debo, Dr. Paul Enenche, all these God's generals that we have in Nigeria, they decide to come together as one and pray for this country, I am telling you with all certainty that God will answer them. But it's like we have a Christian Association of Nigeria. We have never seen them come together to pray. I know that all of you pray individually in your church. But can't Pastor Chris and all the rest all of you come together and pray? Are you telling me that God will not answer all these people? Please, I am begging us. I am begging us. Let us pray for our country. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria. 
if I need that, you will not see you will not see me because of the way the camera is positioned. Else I would have net done. Else I would have net done. Else I would have net done to beg God that will pray for, for our country. In fact, let me know that. Please. Please, I am begging us. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria. Nigeria needs prayer. No matter what you think, no matter what you believe, at this point in time, people are suffering. People are dying. People are hungry. People are starving. Please, let us pray for our country, Nigeria. I beg you. I beg you, put aside your political affiliation, put aside your tribe, put aside religion, put aside everything. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria. Please, Nigeria needs you. Nigeria needs me. Nigeria needs everybody. Look how things are in the country. Just look at. Hmm? Look at the way things are going. Look at price of tomato. Look at price of onion. Look at price of pepper. Are we going to continue like that? Are we going to continue like that? People are hungry. The government is not doing anything about it. You complain, they will not move. You, you cry, they will not shake. Why not let us call unto the one, the ayan that I am, the omnipotent and omniscience redeemer. The one who is, and who was, and who is to call them everlasting. He said, call unto me, all ye that carry every burden. He said, I will give you rest. Let us pray to him. He can give us rest in this country. Because we don't have rest here. Especially if you're a believer. The Bible says we are the light of the world. That we are like a city that is built upon a hill that can never be hidden. Let us shine our light. Let us do all we can do. I am begging us. Have faith. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all the heart and lean not in your own understanding. Some of you may want to insult me, but you may not know the reason why I am saying we should pray. I am begging us. Please, let us pray for our country, Nigeria. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria. And I believe that as we pray, that everything is going to be okay. Nigeria will be better, Nigeria will be greater, Nigeria will be bigger. I know so. I believe so. I have no doubt that this country, Nigeria, will be better again. But you have to play your role. I play my role. Every other person play their role. If the government have said that they will not do anything, that they want all of us to die of hunger and starvation, let us take their case to God. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can think or ask for according to the power that is at work in us. Yes, Kenya did it and it worked. Nigeria is not Kenya. I'm not saying we should not go and protest. Yes, on the day, any day they fix protest, I will be out there to protest. But in as much as we are, as long as we are, in as much as we are doing the physical part, let us not neglect the spiritual part because life is more spiritual than physical. Life is more spiritual than physical. The spiritual controls the physical. Before anything will move in this physical, it, it must first of all be moved in the spiritual. So please, I am begging us, let us do what we can do to save our country, Nigeria. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do it to subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell, so whenever I post another video, you will be notified. If you are a returning subscriber, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you for always stopping by to watch our video. Please, don't forget, like and drop a comment. So by doing this, you trigger the YouTube algorithm to continue to recommend the video to more people. Please, I am begging us, let us pray for our country, Nigeria. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria. It is important. It is vital. Let us pray for our country, Nigeria. I beg you, please, join me in, on this mission to pray for our country, Nigeria. I announced it here that I will be starting a live session. I was supposed to... I, I, will, I will give us the, the particular date. But when, immediately I said it in one of the videos, somebody started abusing me. But... What are we going to do? I love Nigeria. I want the country to do well. The same way I love you. I want you to do well. I want you to be happy. I want you to live peacefully in your father's land. In Nigeria. In our country. That is why I'm so much interested in, in the peace and unity of this country. So I'm begging us. Let us do whatever we can do to assist this country to move forward. The politicians, they I don't know what they, what they are their problem is why they are so wicked but i know that god is going to intervene 
he is going to help us. He will not let us remain like this. God will not continue. If we, as long as we keep praying and calling him, he will not let us remain like this. He will not. I know him. I trust him. He will not. And I need you to trust him too. Have faith that he is going to bring us out of this, this bitter situation. Just have that faith. Have that faith. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to share with us on that platform. Share with your friends and loved ones. God bless you as you do so. I'll see you in the next video. You are blessed. I have good news for you. Your name is being written. I am what I am by the grace of God. As long as that grace does not fail, Satan will never fail. This revival you see will not be aborted. what I am by the grace of God. As long as that grace does not fail, Satan will never fail. This revival you see will not be aborted.